Let's create some Facebook ads to drive more leads and sales to your site. Timestamps below, along with some other helpful links and resources I'll be referencing throughout this guide. So of course, once you log into Facebook, you're going to come over here to the left and you're going to want to click on Ads Manager, not Ads Center. You want Ads Manager, that's going to give you a lot more options. So hopefully you get to a page that looks something like this, and then we are ready to create our campaign. So all we need to do is come up here and click on the create button. And then they're going to ask us why we are creating this campaign. So if you have the Facebook pixel installed or you've got all your conversion tracking ready to go, then going for conversions is actually a pretty good idea, especially if you're doing cold traffic. We'll get to your different targeting options in a moment. And if you're just getting started with Facebook and you're like, what the heck is the Facebook pixel? I don't have conversion, what now? Then go ahead and select traffic. So that's what we're going to do. Link in the cards and the description to a super deep dive Google Tag Manager guide that actually goes through how to put the Facebook pixel on your site and how to set up conversion tracking. It's pretty much code free at this point. So don't worry, it's very easy to set up. I'm just going to start with traffic and then we'll go ahead and click on continue. And then we of course need to give it a name. I'm gonna name it something long and tedious. And all you need to do with your naming conventions is just stay consistent. You pretty much describe what this campaign is doing and what it's targeting, right? So here we're going to be targeting prospects. We're going to use influencers as our uh, audience selection. T1 just lets me know the countries that I'm targeting. We're going to be targeting the Facebook feed and our goal is traffic. So you can go ahead and copy this for yourself or come up with another convoluted name. I swear every ads manager has their own naming convention and it makes sense to them and not the rest of us. So then we go down to our types here. So these campaign details we'll go ahead and leave alone. You do want to leave A-B testing off and we also want to take the and camp advantage campaign budget off because we want our traffic evenly split among our ad sets because we're trying to figure out what targeting is actually going to work and get us the most customers. And so at this point, we've actually completed the campaign, the actual campaign setup. So jumping over to our diagram here, at the very top, what we just did is decide our buying objective and turned off A-B testing. So next, we're going to go into our ad sets, which is our second level, where we essentially say where and who we want our ads to show to. And so this is going to be the age, gender, interests, and placements, all of the settings of who and where our ads are going to show. And here you have remarketing, you have lookalike, and then of course you have interests. Now we're going to focus on interests here. I'll get more on that in a little bit. And then of course, at the very bottom we have message. This is going to be where we have our actual ads or text or video and decide our URL where we're going to send all of this traffic. So we can go ahead and click on next because we're done with that campaign level and then it's time to set up our ad set. So here, I'm just gonna name it Influencer. And since I'm a marketing agency, I'm going to target Neil Patel because he is a popular marketer. Now, when it comes to different targeting options, we'll get to that in a moment, who, who you should target, who you shouldn't target, and how to set that up. Then, of course, the traffic, we'll just go ahead and leave it at website, dynamic creative, we can get fancy later and then optimization will leave it at link clicks. Don't put in a cost per result unless you have the Facebook pixel and you already have a bunch of conversion data and you know what your CPA is. And if you're like, what the heck is CPA? Then definitely leave it alone. And our daily budget, of course they want us, these platforms always want us to spend more money. So I'm going to be a little aggressive and put it at, well, let's go conservative here. I'm just going to put it at 250 a day. And then our, we have, of course, our start date. I'll leave the end date off because we need to come back here later and figure out what is and is not working. And unlike Google ads, where you can set an end date and easily turn it on and off, when you have Facebook ads turning on and off all the time, it winds up actually screwing some stuff up. So let's definitely not put an end date there. So now we get to audience. This is where the rubber meets the road. Who on earth are we going to show our ads to? So of course we have existing custom audiences. And so these are audiences of people who've already visited your site via the Facebook pixel. You're doing remarketing saying, hey, anyone that showed up to this page, show them this ad. Or anyone who showed up to my website overall, show them this ad, right? So that's really powerful, but not really helpful if you're just starting because 
we have no traffic because we just started, right? <laughs> and then there's also something called lookalike audiences, which is really awesome. But let's face it, most of us don't have a list of five or 10,000 people that we can upload to Facebook. If you already have an email list of like five or 10K people, then definitely look up how to set up lookalike audiences. For the rest of us normal folk just getting started, we're going to need to create our own and target a audience of cold people so we can eventually create remarketing and lookalike audiences. So here, what we're going to do is go ahead and start with locations. Go ahead and just target the people living in, unless you're a hotel or Airbnb trying to get people outside of your area to come to you. And then I'm just gonna add a couple more countries. And so here I've gone ahead and targeted English speaking countries because I know from previous conversion data, these are the countries that we typically have paying customers from. So it's important that you target countries that you not just have a lot of traffic or fans, but are actually driving revenue. So there are actually a lot of countries that we target for brand awareness and just general content, but we don't target those countries for actual sales because for whatever reason, they just don't like buying from me. So that's just how it goes, right? So we'll go ahead and come down to age and we're going to move this up to 25. And I'm just gonna do this because I'm gonna assume anyone under 25 is probably not all that interested in marketing and sales funnel templates or has the discretionary income to um, spend on marketing services. So genders, we'll go ahead and leave that alone and then we'll come into detailed targeting. So here is where we start to tell Facebook who specifically we want to target. And so there are tons of different demographics, interests, behaviors. Unfortunately, the audience insights tool is no longer available. So here's what I would recommend. Make a list of influencers that you know about in your particular niche or industry. Then you want to list them from who you think is most popular to least popular. And then you actually wanna start at the bottom of that list. Because let's say I am a marketer, right? And we'll say I want to target Gary Vee because he runs a marketing agency and he's super popular, right? Well, the problem with that is there are a lot of non-marketers and non-entrepreneurs who know who Gary Vee is. I'd have the same problem if I had targeted Ty Lopez or Grant Cardone or someone like Robert Kiyosaki or Seth Godin. Some of them, some of the influencers in your niche are going to be so big, you're actually going to be showing your ads to people who are completely irrelevant. And so you want the smaller ones of people who are still popular, obviously, but not so popular they've reached the celebrity status outside of their niche. And so no offense to Neil Patel, but I think he's big enough where I'm going to get a good audience size, but not so big, I'm going to attract a bunch of unqualified people. And so we see here our audience definition is not too specific, it's in the green. If it winds up going red, that simply means that whatever audience size there is on Facebook uh, is too small for you to target with that particular person. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at just one here, and then we can come down here and select manual placements. Now here, I just want to show up on the Facebook newsfeed. And so I'm going to uncheck Instagram, and I'm going to uncheck the audience network. And this, okay, good, it happened again. So now you see that I'm being too specific. So we have two, we have two options here. Number one, we could say, okay, we really know that this audience is full of people that we want, so we're just going to let our ads run willy-nilly everywhere, which for your first campaign probably isn't a good idea. And so in this particular instance, you know, the ads you want to run on Facebook are, are different than you want to run on Instagram. And so what we need to do here is try and come up with another person that we can target where Facebook isn't going to tell us that our, come on, audience definition is too small. Now this doesn't mean that the influencer you chose is not popular. Obviously, Neil Patel is super popular and this should work just fine. But for whatever reason, Facebook's being difficult with us. So we have to try another person that is popular with marketers. So I'll try Russell Brunson, the founder of ClickFunnels. And all of a sudden, the estimated audience size is really small. That's probably not gonna work out too well. Um, but at least we are in the green. And so something that we might find is we might find that we try all of these and simply because we don't want to show up across every single placement on Facebook, our campaigns don't do well. And so if they didn't do well, then I'd come back in here and check Instagram and then add some additional images specifically for the uh, Instagram ecosystem. But for now, I'll just come up here and change the ad name, or I should say ad set name. So 
Just as a quick summary, jumping into our diagram here, we are at the ad set level. So we decided the location, we decided our budget, we decided the audience that we were going to target, and then of course we decided what placements we wanted to show up on. Now, when it comes to your ad set testing, all of, all of your ad sets across this level, the only thing that should change is the audience targeting, right? And so all of those other settings should stay the same across your ad sets. So let's jump back into the interface here. You can see that we are all done. I spelled his name wrong. And then we'll go ahead and click on next. So now comes the actual hard part, and that is creating your ad. So this could be a video in and of itself. The good news is you can use Canva to create your ad images. It's super easy to use. So I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna learn more about Canva, and I recommend Canva Pro. Of course, if you do decide to upgrade, we receive a commission as a way to support this channel. So I'll go ahead and give this ad a name, and then scrolling down here, of course, we can select the Facebook page that we want these ads to run from. We are not going to connect to Instagram. And of course we need to create a new ad. So we'll leave it at manual upload so we can upload our images. It'll be a single image or video. We're not going to do carousel this time. That's definitely something you can test in the future. And we will go ahead and select standard enhancements. This doesn't seem to do very much from what I've seen with the few ads we've run checking this box, but it doesn't seem to hurt either. So we'll come down to add creative and we will not create a video, but we'll come up here and we will add an image. And so here's a quick little diagram of the different image dimensions that you should use. And you need to have all of these. Now, of course, there could be a video in and of itself, but make sure that unlike what you're seeing here, you don't want your ad images to look like this. They should look more like this. You can see that all of a sudden there's no text. The less text you have on your ad, the better. So you really don't wanna have a bunch of text on your ad because of that 20% rule. And even then, Facebook just doesn't want a bunch of text in your images. Of course you can test, but here I'm going to try ones without any text. So I'll go ahead and just select the first one here. I'll click on next. It's going to show us our previews and I'll just come down here and click on replace and select the actual dimensions I want for that placement. And of course I'm getting a little warning here, so I'll go ahead and let them uh, crop it in. And then there we go. So we have our three different ad versions. Nope, this one messed up. There we go. We have our three different ad versions uh, all formatted for the different places that it's going to show up across the Facebook ad network. So we'll go ahead and click on next. We'll go ahead and allow them to put on all their optimizations and then we'll go ahead and click on done. And of course you can see we have a little preview of what these ads are going to look like in their different places. And so now we need to come down to the text. Now this is a video in and of itself. You've probably signed up for some sort of service before and you have to check that terms of service and you don't really read it. With Facebook, you really do need to read it because they are super strict and they are super mean and they will not tell you why an ad is actually not working. In fact, in preparation for this video, uh, <laughs> yesterday, overnight, this exact ad was actually disapproved for a completely different policy change, it, it, completely different policy. Every time I try to run an ad, even if it's the same ad, they'll come back and say, okay, fix this. All right, yeah, yeah, I fixed it. And then, okay, fix that. Oh, okay, yeah, I fixed this. All right, we're just gonna ban you all together. What the heck? So be really careful with these. And so to save us some time, I've already gone ahead and written out some headlines. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste those in. And so something to be aware of with your text is you really don't wanna make claims at all. And so something that a lot of marketers do in the marketing niche, since we can't say we made millions of dollars for our clients, even though that might be true, what we can say is we spent lots of money. And so if you're trying to wiggle around like, okay, well, I can't make this claim that I got this result or got that result, then another thing you can do is look at how much money you've spent or how much time you've spent. And you can use that metric as a way to illustrate the value of whatever you are offering. Like I've been working out for 10 years or we've develop this process after spending millions of dollars of ads. So we're not necessarily saying you're going to make millions, we just said we spent millions, right? And so you really, really do need to be careful. And then for your primary text, you're going to want to use something called the PAS framework, problem, agitate, solve. And as a general rule of thumb, avoid using the word you. I know there's gonna be someone in the comments. Actually, I run ads all the time and I say you this and you that. Yeah, that's great if you can get away with it, but 
When it comes to the terms of service, Facebook really doesn't want you calling out specific people, even though that's kind of how advertising, you know, is really supposed to work. And so what you need to do is use yourself or a previous client or student as a case study. That way you are really far outside the bounds of flirting with that line of is straight up saying, hey, do you feel fat, right? Like you can't, you can't say anything remotely like that, right? So we always start with the problem. What is the problem that our ideal customer is dealing with? All right, so that's what 90 seconds of random copywriting will get you. So please don't judge me too hard on how terrible this is. So we want to, of course, start off with the problem. What's the problem? Well, we're offering some free funnel templates. And so whoever we're targeting has a problem of, I don't know what to write on my landing page, my sales page, and how on earth should these be designed? Then we want to agitate it. And so we want to really dig into it. So normally this is going to be time, money, energy, some sort of mistake that their other mistake or misconception or myth that they are trapped in or making. And so that's where we dig into it here, where you're just spending hours. And most people who've ever built a funnel, they have a story where they spent like two hours on a button or something really, really dumb. And so we want to speak to that experience and then of course we transition into the solution, which is whatever the offer is of the ad. And hopefully Facebook um, allows us to <laughs> allows us to have that. So of course you can have multiple primary texts as well. And then we'll just I'll just leave it at that for now. But that's the PSA framework: problem, agitate, solve. Just use that for your ads. It'll save you so much headache when it comes to what on earth to put in the ad. And of course we need our website URL. So we'll go ahead and paste in the URL. Of course, we can preview it. So here's our landing page. If you'd like to actually copy our funnel templates because simple landing pages like this really do convert really well, I'll leave a link in the description and you can grab a copy to all of them and set up a free systemy.io account and get started in an afternoon Just because that's the whole point of this particular offer is to get your funnel up and running as quickly as possible, not meta at all. So. Check that out in the description if you want to learn more. So for our call to action, we'll go ahead and just say download because they're going to be able to directly import this into their account. Website events, we'll go ahead and leave that alone because we already have the pixel. Again, link in the cards and the description to that guide that goes through how to actually install the pixel on your site, pretty much code free. You might have to like copy and paste something, but for the most part, it's code free. So we'll go ahead and click on publish here. So once we do our Add an ad set will go into review, of course. And then here's what you want to do right now. Wait, <laughs> wait for this ad to be approved before you go and make another ad set or another ad. And the reason you want to do that is because if there's something in this ad that Google doesn't like, then, or not Google, Facebook, you see I do a lot more with Google than Facebook. So if there's something in the ad Facebook doesn't like, well, you don't want to have 12 different ads all of a sudden you know, flagged on your account at once. You wanna make sure that you do it once, get the ad approved, and then you can copy it over to your other ad sets. So going back to our diagram, we made one campaign, we made one ad set with one ad. Once that is approved, then you can move on to creating other ad sets, trying other influencers in your niche. And then of course you can create another ad or two, but always create ads one at a time. So you don't have an account that has like 12 or 15 different ads, you know, flagged at the same time, because that's just going to make Facebook think you're spamming them, even though it's the same ad, it was just, you know, flagged multiple times. And that's all there is to it, to creating your Facebook ads. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you got some value out of this video. You're a lot more confident with setting up your first couple of Facebook ad campaigns. Comment below with your questions and subscribe for more deep dive guides just like this one. And until the next, keep building the business you love.